Hi everyone and welcome back for another episode in our Shooter AI tutorial series. In this episode we're looking at trying to complete our cover, uh, enemy finding cover system. Um, last time we got our enemy to find cover and shoot from it, but we want to fix a few things. First of all, I'm going to fix that aiming issue where they're not aiming at the player whilst they're shooting. Let's see that again. Yep. Yeah. So you see he's not turning, that needs to be fixed. And the other thing we need to fix as well is this little jostling he does behind the thing. We need to make him adjust and find a new position when the player flanks him or when he sees the player's flanked him. Okay. So overall making it a bit more stable and a bit more um, used to what we're seeing. So the first thing we do is fix the aiming issue. So the aiming issue uh, is caused by this focus that happens over here. So on the tasks when they run, this these two here find the player and focus on the player. But once it's done there, that's it. It doesn't actually focus on the player, it focuses on the location of the player. So that location doesn't change really, it's just a location. So we need to tell it to update whilst it's shooting to point the correct way. So in the shoot from cover task, we're going to add a tick event. So type in tick. And we'll do receive tick AI. So on this tick event, we're going to be updating the players, uh, the enemy's sorry, uh, direction that they're focusing on. So on the owner controller, drag that out and go set focus. And go set uh, focus there. And we could either do, uh, sorry, we won't do set focus, we'll do set focal point. Because I want to make sure we're using the vector. So on the set focal point, what we're going to do here is get the player character that we're targeting. Uh, in this case, it is a player character. So get player character. And once we've got that, we can get the actor location and plug that into there. So this tick AI is going to continually run the whole entire time so if I push play when he goes to shoot you can see him turning and shooting towards the, the player character so now it's just this flanking we want to make, improve this flanking behavior okay so what I want him to do is I want him to change when he is calling this find cover sequence and like this is only going to be called when in cover is not is is not set okay when this fails if this fails then it'll go back up into the next sequence okay so we're going to do that and we're also going to add uh, another one here another decorator um so right click on it go add decorator blackboard and the decorator we're going to be using is the uh can see player so we only want him to find cover if he can see the player that he's coming to be coming from so can see player is set and click save and we'll move on from there and take a look at our AI controller so as I said the task in our behavior tree let's look it back up so I can show you the way a sequence a selector works sorry is that it'll do this one until it fails <clears throat> and if it fails it'll go up back up the branch and down the next one instead so we need to make this fail and the only way we can force the fail is if we say is in cover is false so we need to detect when we want that to be the case and we'll do that in the ai controller on this perception update that we've got here so the first thing we'll do here is i'm going to create a new variable and I'm going to call this can see player. And we'll leave it as a boolean. Drag this out. And we're going to put it between our cast here and the set value ball. And choose set. And I'm just going to hook that up into our booleans that we currently got there. So this doesn't change anything. It just sets that can see player into a variable. Okay, once we've got that. 
Um, after the set values ball, so once you've determined whether or not you can see the player or not, we want to then say if you can see the player and you're crouching, take is in cover off because you're no longer in cover, you're exposed to the player. So we need a branch. <coughs> And the condition is the cancel player variable we just made. And we want to combine this with whether or not we're crouching. So to get whether or not we're crouching, we need to get the enemy pawn. So we could um, go for a whole motion of casting every single time, but that's expensive. What would be a better idea is on a begin play, we do it here. So I'm going to get controlled pawn and then I'm going to cast this to my enemy, turning it from a generic to a specific. And with that specific there, I can promote that to a variable and call that enemy pawn. I click compile. With that done, back to my boolean that I'm doing down here. I'm going to get my enemy pawn out, which is get. And from there, I'm going to get the character movement. And then from there, Not that one. Uh, or maybe it is. That's not right, I don't think. Oh no. Oh, no. Okay, so we want to use it is crouching uh, node there. So we've got a character movement from the new pawn. We determine whether or not we're crouching. If we are, and we can see the player. That means we're no longer safe so on the true here we need to set a value to a ball so get blackboard on our blackboard we want to set value as a ball and that goes into true the key name you can type in literal And it is called is in cover. And we want to make sure it's left as false. So when that occurs, this should return false. And when it's changed, we want it to abort everything it's doing and then go on to the next one. So it's set to abort stuff. So if it's selected, go into your details panel on the right hand side, you'll see the abort options. So on results changed. We want to change it to aborting itself. So when it aborts itself, it will go back up and this way. Click save and play. So now if I go in here, you see he goes straight to another place. There we are. So this issue, I was waiting for this one to appear. When he's crouched and shooting upwards. So the reason why that's happening is because it's aborting the task for shooting without telling it to stand back up. So on our uh, shoot from cover task, we're going to do an event called abort, and we go receive abort AI. And when it's aborted, we're just going to take it to uh, to stand up. Okay, so we should do this stuff here. So we've got enemy pawn variable, just drag that out, just get. And go uncrouch. Plug that in. And then from there, we can finish the abort. So when it, this event, this task is aborted, it will call this event here, uncrouch it, and then finish the abort. Let's just fix those little minor issues there. So at the moment, 
we're pretty much there. Uh, all that's left is to make it so that when he's running, running to cover, he shoots at us. So if I was to get in his grill, uh, so I want him to stand up and start shooting at me. So if he sees me and he's not in cover, I want him to shoot at me while, whilst he's running to cover. Okay, so to make it so he can focus on a player whilst he's running for cover, is we're going to look at our focus task here and duplicate it. So right click, duplicate, and we go focus player, we'll call it, open it up. And instead of using this set focal point, we're going to use the owner controller to set focus. And the new focus is going to be get player character. Hit compile and close that. And we're going to put that in our behavior tree in the find cover here. So when he's finding the cover, he'll focus on the player. So keep an eye on the player the whole time. Um, the targets we, we don't need here because we don't use them. So we can click play. So now when he runs, to co runs from cover, you see he's always looking at the player. So sort of keeping his danger in check. Okay. But notice one thing in that when he's behind cover, if I was to say stick around, you'll notice that he will always follow me when he's duck behind cover. Which is not what I want because I want him to have no idea where the hell I am whilst I'm in cover. So once we've got him into cover, we need to make him lose focus. So on the enemy shoot cover, at the end of get into cover. After that, we have to go into here and do lose focus, which is a task we made uh, previously, like so. Again, we're not using that variable. We can actually delete that. We don't actually need it. Push play. So then, when he's looking for cover, he'll keep an eye on me. Once he's in cover, He'll lose track of me until he sees me. So he's still doing the crouching shooting thing. Why is that? Let's have a look and see where that's gone wrong. Ah, uh, that's because on our shoot from cover we told him to uncrouch I also need to tell him to stop shooting so when we've got that stop shooting code here you need to do exactly the same thing here so from there stop shooting like so we compile push play and we're kind of there Okay, and there we have a basic cover system for our enemies. Obviously, this can go a lot more in detail with a lot more AI options. So that's totally up to you as a designer. But hopefully, you've learned some of the basics here enough where you can adapt things and change things up and add different parts to it. Now, what we'll be working in the next episode is what I'll show you right now. Um, if I was to put multiple enemies in here, like so. He will run to cover and shoot at me. These, these will, should all run to cover and, and find cover and shoot. Give me gameplay. But I'm trying to get it set up so I can show you the issue that we have at the moment. So at the moment, this guy will shoot at me. These guys won't. Yeah. So what we need to do is set up a team of communication. So when one enemy shoots nearby other enemies, they will also pick up the same target and start shooting at me. So that's what we're doing in the next episode, is working on those team mechanics from the enemy. Because at the moment, they're all independent of each other. So if I stood there in their line of sight, they will start doing their thing.
thank you very much for watching thank you for everyone who supported me though so far on patreon um wouldn't be doing this without you guys so massive thank you to everyone who's donated if you want to donate head over to patreon.com forward slash riley where one dollar will get you access to all the videos nice and early like a few months early as well as access to our discord and many other benefits too Thank you to the top patrons for their massive support this past month. Um, it's, it's amazing. Uh, I can't believe you guys uh, are supporting me as much as you are. It's great. Um, as I say, I want to do this full time eventually, and you are, you are all uh, bringing me one step closer to that. So thank you very much. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like and share the video. And I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.